he's 16, is a 35-year-old woman presenting with seizure. Here we have some flare images from an MRI. We have a sagittal flare. Finally, we have some post-contrast images through the same level. Now I would like you to tell me what is the most likely diagnosis. And for these lesions, what is the annual risk of hemorrhage? Unfortunately, on some of these AVR exams, the percentages and quantitative questions like this can be rather close. So it can be a little bit tricky. Here you have a case of a cavernous malformation, which have been previously referred to as cavernomas. These are benign collections of disorganized blood vessels, which occur in the brain. Now, they typically don't show up on angiograms, so they can be referred to as angiographic negative vascular malformations. There's really two forms of these lesions. One is the isolated lesion, that you'll often see with a developmental venous anomaly. And uh, sometimes you'll see patients that have more than one uh, cavernous malformation because it's associated with some familial abnormalities. They can hemorrhage and cause symptoms. The isolated lesions tend to hemorrhage at a risk of about 0.25 to 0.75% per year. The risk of familial hemorrhage is a little bit higher and it tends to kind of go up with each lesion. So if you have more than one lesion, the risk is, is considerably higher. The imaging appearance tends to be dominated by blood products, so you can have areas of hyperdensity on CT. On MRI, you'll often have areas of T2 hyperintensity centrally with peripheral areas of susceptibility. It could be kind of multiple compartments, which can kind of lead to this popcorn type of appearance. Often there'll be areas of T1 hyperintensity as well, and very uh, infrequently you'll have a little bit of enhancement, but most commonly they're described as to not enhance. Now, a nice clue on these can be if you have a developmental venous anomaly adjacent to it, that can kind of strengthen your uh, confidence about this diagnosis. Now, on angiography, as I mentioned, these tend to be occult and have no appreciable enhancement. There you see the flare images that we were looking at on the left the inferior parietal lobe. You have this lesion, so it's centrally T2 hyperintense and has this rim of dark on T2, so that's susceptibility from old blood products or hemocytorin. And you see the same thing on the coronal image. On the post-contrast image, you see that there's this branching linear area of enhancement and the structures deep to it. That's your developmental venous anomaly that's associated with this. So that kind of strengthens our diagnosis that this is a cavernoma. Our question was, what is the annual risk of hemorrhage? For these the lesions, it's a little bit less than 1%. Uh, when patients have had prior hemorrhage, the rates kind of spike in the immediate uh, near future, but eventually they'll return to kind of this normal baseline risk of less than 1% per year.